All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you a systematic way of calculating the Vandermont determinant. Because in previous videos, I did a, cool, a really awesome way that actually also works. Another way that sort of works in that particular case, but it's not clear how to get the general formula. But now I would like to show you how to get the general formula. And in particular, let's evaluate the Vandermont determinant 1, 1, 1, 1, x, y, z, t, x squared, y squared, z squared, t squared, and x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, t cubed. And here's our goal. So we would like to use induction. Don't worry if you don't know what induction is, you don't need to know that. But basically our goal is to take this four by four Vandermont determinant and transform it into a three by three Vandermont determinant. Because if you do that, then the general idea is you can just continue until you get a one by one Vandermont determinant, which is uh, uh, trivial. Okay. So again, you have to understand once we just uh, write this as a smaller Vandermont determinant, we are done. That's sort of the principle of in mathematical induction. If you want to prove a big statement, if you sort of extract a exactly the same but equivalent but smaller statement then you're done okay how do we do this the start is actually like the previous video so we want to get rid of those ones and for this we you know, subtract the uh, first row from the second row the first row from the third row and the first row from the fourth row then you get simply the determinant of one and x x squared, x cubed, and then 0, y minus x, y squared minus x squared, and y cubed minus x cubed, and same thing with z, 0, z minus x, uh, z squared minus x squared, z cubed minus x cubed, And 0, t minus x, t squared minus x squared, t cubed minus x cubed. So that was the way to do it. Remember also for the previous video with row reduction. And what we did in the previous video, we said, well, notice there are common factors y minus x here. Here, actually, we want to do something different. In other words, what we would like to do, we would like to... So column reduce this matrix. Before we row reduce the matrix, now we would like to column reduce the matrix. And turns out if you column reduce, it's the same rules as row reduction. Most of the time it doesn't affect the determinant. In particular, what we would like to do, we would like to, okay, it's a weird notation, but we would like to s subtract minus x, times the third column from the fourth column. Then what we get is one, zero, 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 x, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, and then same thing with x squared, x squared, y squared minus x squared, y, z squared minus x squared, and t squared minus x squared, and now let's see what happens. So x cubed minus x times x squared, that becomes zero. This next term, so y cubed minus x cubed minus x times this. So it's really minus x y squared plus x cubed. And the x cubes cancel out. Same thing here, we get z cubed minus x cubed minus x z squared plus x cubed. This cancels out. And again, t cubed minus x cubed minus x t squared plus x cubed. And there goes that. 
And the nice thing is we can, uh, there's a, you know, we can simplify this a little bit. So maybe uh, apparently it's too far to go this whiteboard. So let's just do it on a new one. So this gives you, again, the determinant of 1, 0, 0, 0, x, y minus x, z minus x, and then t minus x, and then x squared, y squared minus x squared, z squared minus x squared, t squared minus x squared, and 0. Again, and then what do we have? So uh, just y squared. Again, there's this common factor of y squared. So y squared, y minus x, z squared, uh, z minus x, and then uh, t squared, t minus x. Why is that useful? Because suppose we can actually factor out y minus x, z minus x, t minus x then this becomes y squared, z squared, t squared, which is sort of the third column of a van der Mond matrix, of a three by three van der Mond matrix, which shows you we're on the right track. And in fact, to show that we're on the right track, now let's repeat the same thing, but with the third column. So what we would like to do now is, let's see, um, multiply the second column by minus x and add it to the third column. So we get one, zero, 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 and then x, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, and then x squared minus x times x is zero. So dos x, okay, x times x. And then y squared minus x squared, and then minus x times this, so minus xy plus x squared. And this cancels out. And also same thing here. So z squared minus x squared minus xz plus x squared and t squared minus x squared. Uh, again, minus xt plus x squared and then zero and then y squared, y minus x z squared, z minus x, t squared, t minus x. And then we also can factor stuff out. So we get equals to 1, 0, 0, 0, x, 0, 0, 0, and then y minus x. And notice again, there's this common factor of y here. So y times y minus x, oh no, I think I put an extra zero here, plus zero times y squared, y squared times y minus x, and then same thing with z, z minus x, z times z minus x, and then z squared times z minus x, and t minus x, t times t minus x, t squared times t minus x which is wonderful because uh, notice there is this common factor here in all rows now. So we get all those three common factors, which we can just factor out. And so we get, by the way, if you wanna be extra pedantic, you can subtract like X times this from this uh, row column, but we don't need that. So then we get, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, times the determinant of 1, x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, y, y, z, t, y squared, z squared, t squared. And if it's not obvious to you now, well, let's expand it along the first column. And we get y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, times the determinant of 1, 1, 1, y, z, t, and y squared, z squared, t squared. 
which is indeed a mini van der Moen determinant. So you see, you took the 4x4 van der Moen determinant and uh, turned it into a 3x3 van der Moen determinant. And now you can use induction if you'd like. In the same process, you can turn the 3x3 van der Moen into a 2x2 van der Moen, and then into a 1x1 van der Moen, and if you'd like, yeah, just a 1x1 van der Moen, and then that shouldn't be too bad. And so the question is, what is then the general formula? Well, here notice, what have we done? We took, so again, the way I like to say, we have four variables, x, y, z, t. First, we fixed x, and we subtracted x from y, from z, and t. That's how you get y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. And now recursively, we would like just to say that we have y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. And now recursively, we would like to say, take the second variable, y, and subtract y from z and t. So z minus y, t minus y. And lastly, let's do it with z, then we just get z minus t. And then t, we don't really do anything with it. And that is your formula for a 4x4 van der Moen determinant. And you can see just by successively uh, subtracting columns, you do get the general formula for n by n van der Moen determinant. But as I like to say, it's left as an exercise to the reader, or I guess an exercise to the viewer here. All right, I hope you like this van der Moen extravaganza. If you wanna see more linear algebra and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.